Hey, welcome to Ergo Everything, where we discuss RSI solutions for computer users. Today, we're talking about how to prevent RSI. Um, and I think most of my audience is RSI sufferers who are currently in a lot of pain. But I did have a comment from someone who does not have RSI, just kind of stumbled upon the channel and asked, hey, I'm a computer engineer. This sounds so scary. How can I prevent RSI? So I want to address that, um, even if it's just for her, even if no one else ever, ever sees it who can uh, benefit. But RSI is, is so serious. That is why I made this channel. Um, and I want to tell you first how serious RSI can be so that you understand why I'm recommending the sometimes simple but sometimes pretty drastic changes that I would recommend to try to prevent RSI if you work with computers full time. First of all, I'll, I'll talk about my experience. So my RSI started out as like a small pain. I just didn't take it seriously because I thought it was this work thing. I didn't understand that it was a huge health implication to my life. And I let my RSI progress for years and years um, until one day I just had to quit my job. Um, the pain was terrible, and it was terrible all the time. It never, ever went away. It would be worse when I was working, but then when I, I rested and was away from work, it would, it would hurt constantly. And it got to a point where I couldn't drive without pain. Just holding the steering wheel would hurt. I couldn't pick up a glass of water without pain. Um, I couldn't hold my little nephew because, unless I was like sitting down because the act of holding him up with my forearm muscles would absolutely trigger a huge flare-up of pain for me. Um, it can affect your sex life. You use your hands when you have sex. Um, it, it can be just absolutely devastating. I have been unable to work, not just work in my field. I have been unable to hold a job that doesn't trigger flare-ups of pain for eight months. Um, it can absolutely, I am disabled, like it can destroy your life. And I am not the only one who has experienced this. There are many stories of people who have experienced the exact same problems as me. And some people who have had it even worse, um, who have found it painful to gotten to a point where it's painful to so much as sit up as opposed to lying down. Um, and there was even a story I read of a man who lost the ability just to use his muscles. Like, I often cannot use the muscles of my forearm because it will trigger pain, but he literally lost the ability to, like, grip things, and he said his muscles just no longer worked as muscles. So while, you know, there are lots of people who get away with murder, they, they don't do anything ergonomic, and they don't ever seem to have any problems. RSI is a huge deal and it affects more people than you think. It's often kept a secret because if you reveal that you're in pain, you could suddenly be seen as a bad employee at risk of leaving and get fired or be seen as an unproductive employee because you're, you know, trying to do ergonomic things for yourself. So it is a much bigger problem than people think and it, it can happen to you. Um, however, I think if you take precautions, you can drastically reduce the risk of that happening. So what kind of precautions can you take? Um, ergonomics is one. Um, the equipment that we use for our computers is not really built around our bodies. It's just built around what's easiest to use and sometimes what's cheapest to make and sell. So the first thing I would recommend is getting an ergonomic keyboard. I specifically recommend this one. I have it. Um, it's the Kinesis Advantage 2. I have a whole video about why I think it's the best option on the market. Um, I also put a trackball in the center, and if you watch that video, I describe why I think that's kind of the best mousing option. Uh, but mice are evil. Mice will <laughs> kill your hands. Um, I think mice will kill anyone's hands. Switch to keyboard shortcuts. I do have a couple videos on keyboard shortcuts. I need to make more. 
Um, and they have like really cool tips in them too about using keyboard shortcuts, like the sticky keys feature on Windows, which allows you, instead of having to hold um, a key combination, you can just hit the key separately and it still registers. Um, you can also get uh, free browser extensions that allow you to surf the web without with your keyboard, which is traditionally really, really hard to do. So definitely invest in learning how to do that. Um, I've got a couple videos, like I said, which will be in the description. I'm hopefully going to be making like two or three more. But yeah, so definitely go for the ergonomics. And you really need a keyboard tray or desk that is height adjustable because we all are different heights and desks are all standard heights and we we all need to really optimize where our keyboard is um, you don't want your your wrist to be going up or going down and then having to do this um, so of course that is an issue um, a, and then I think you all know this but you want your monitor height to be high so that you are not tempted to come down like this so I just use foam uh, yoga blocks uh, when I'm working. My computer is this high. I bring it down lower for recording so that the camera's in a good spot. Um, but you want your, your monitors to be high so you can have good posture. Um, that's really all I think you need to do ergonomically. And um, I think it'll all cost you under $500 and it's a really worthwhile investment in your future. Um, the next thing that I would recommend, because I have seen the experts recommend it so often, is taking regular micro breaks. Um, so what this means is you're working and every, I mean, the science isn't in, but like every like 30 minutes, every 15 minutes, um, you just take a break. And when you take that break, you, you move your body out of this static position that you're always in. So... Um, the best way to do this, I think, is to get the Stretch O'Clock app, which is free, though only available on iPhone. It was made by Suparna Damani, who is kind of like the, she's a physical therapist that is kind of world-renowned for treating RSI, because typical doctors are really, really bad at treating RSI. And she made this app where you can set a timer for however you want however long you want and when it goes off it'll give you a recommendation of a stretch or little exercise to do that is good for preventing or yeah preventing RSI or reoccurrence of RSI. Um, if you don't have an iPhone like I don't um, just set a timer and when it goes off um, mostly get your arms out of this position. Put them over your head. So I like to do you know a little this right you're just reaching for that shoulder blade. Um, you can also take your hands, interlace them, and just kind of lean back. And this way you don't even look like you're stretching. You look like you're just relaxing. Um, and just enjoy that stretch. Um, personally, I think that our bodies, you know, have been evolving for a long time. And I don't think, <laughs> I don't think nature has quite figured us out. Like, we're bipedal and we struggle with being bipedal and we end up with like back pain and stuff. And uh, we're definitely, we evolved to do fine dexterous movement with our hands. However, I don't think we evolved to do the same fine movements with our hands over and over again. Um, like when you do a big movement with your body, like let's say you're like lifting something. Um, I think your your body knows how to deal with that. It's like, oh, okay, we use those muscles. Now we need to repair them. But when you do these really small movements, I, I just don't think it triggers in your, in your body that it needs to go and repair that damage from the fine small movements. So if you can break up the small movements with big movements that actually like stimulate blood flow and stuff, I, I think that helps. Um, and also just like remind your body that like, hey, we actually do need to stay mobile. We need to, we don't want to build our body so that it can just be in this position. We, we want to remind it that we need to inhabit a whole range of, of movements. We need our body to be like healthy and functional. <laughs> I don't know. That probably was not super straightforward, but <laughs> hopefully you understand what I mean. So stretch o'clock is a great option because it just gives you all these exercises. 
Um, there's also something called RSI Guard, which you have to pay for. I haven't tried it myself personally, but if you are not good at taking breaks, RSI Guard forces you to. Your computer becomes unusable when it's time for the break. So you might consider that option as well. Um, okay, the next, the next thing you might need to con consider is posture. Poor posture, which is easy to get into when you work with computers. Um, poor posture is not known to cause RSI, but is highly suspected to cause RSI. We just don't really have the studies to prove it at this point. Um, but when you are in this rounded posture, um, it can um, put stress on the blood vessels and nerves that are going to your arm. So um, specifically, there's a couple of spots. So the in between the anterior and medial scalene with bad posture, uh, those muscles can squish the blood supply and the nerves. And you are exercising these muscles with these all these little micro movements. You need to have good blood supply. Um, otherwise, they're just going to get damaged and not be able to repair themselves like the body is supposed to do on a regular basis. Having good posture, though, is kind of complicated. Like, I many times throughout my life have been told to sit up straight, pull my shoulders back, and that didn't create any lasting change for me. So what I would recommend is this awesome YouTube channel called uh, Movement and Posture. I'll link below. And it's just a channel um, going over the Alexander Technique, which is basically learning to use your body in an ergonomic way, um, specifically your posture. And it's kind of like meditation where you're like a, a meditation talk through, but you're being talked through how to align your body. And I, for example, I used to always, um, I think it's called anterior pelvic tilt, but I used to just always have my ass just sticking out. And I thought I had the biggest ass ever. Turns out I just have anterior pelvic tilt and I wasn't like engaging my abs. And because I didn't have that like proper base to my spine, it kind of messed up everything else flowing up. Um, and so that channel was able to help me realize that among other things. And uh, I think it's the best way to try to improve your posture and it's free. Um, now, hopefully if you work with computers full time, you will definitely take the advice of setting up an ergonomic workstation of um, taking the micro breaks with like stretch o'clock. And um, hopefully you'll work on your posture, though I know that's a difficult one. I have one last recommendation, which might seem like a lot, but if you're worried about RSI, I would invest the time that it takes to, to do this last uh, recommendation. But the last recommendation is to use voice recognition software. So if you, specifically if you write for a living um, with your computer or you're a computer programmer, uh, voice recognition software has come a long way. It's, I use it all the time. It's excellent. If you're a writer, I would recommend Dragon Naturally Speaking. It's kind of the best on the market and, and easiest to use. And uh, you, can, you can just speak what you want, and it actually helps you type faster. And um, it can improve your voice because you can, because you can write so fast. It kind of changes your tone of voice and makes it, like if you write dialogue, it'll help you so much with dialogue. And that's super easy. If you're a writer, definitely get Dragon Naturally Speaking and get a good microphone that has um, a noise canceling feature. I'm not the best person to recommend microphones, but there are reviews and stuff out there. Um, if you are a programmer, programming by voice has not really been very accessible until like just now. Now it has like exploded and there are so... Uh, from what I hear, it's incredibly good. I've tried a little bit um, because I was just so determined in my injury, but I decided that, you know, the computer world is not for me at this point. But um, if you uh, if you code, get Talon. Um, Talon is free. And you just need a good microphone again. And um, again, it can be faster to code by voice. Now, there's certain things that are kind of hard to do by voice, but your hands are still healthy. And so if you switch back and forth between sometimes you use the voice recognition and sometimes you use your hands, you're naturally giving your hands a break um, without having to like interrupt your day and 
affect your productivity, but definitely still get your hands over your head um, at points in the day. I would, I would highly recommend it. It's a learning curve, but I think it's so worth it if you want to have a healthy programming career for the rest of your life. And I know some people get away with it and don't ever have any pain, but you are, if you work with computers, you are in an industry that can potentially utterly disable you. And on top of that, no one understands this disability. No one takes it seriously. You are never going to get disability. You just will be disabled. So I don't want to be too alarmist, but if you work with computers, please, please, please do everything you can to minimize your risk of getting RSI. I think if you did all these things, there's basically no way you could get RSI, but what do I know? I'm just, just a dumb person. Um, anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Um, like and subscribe if you want more advice. Basically, any advice I give here for people who are currently suffering with RSI could be helpful uh, for you as, a, as prevention. So, oh, and please comment. Uh, I made this video because of a comment. I absolutely live for comments. Um, <laughs> anyways, have a good one. We'll see you next time.